three our homebrew segment today we are welcoming loretta chen author of m slash other or mother if you want to say it that way best-selling author loretta is celebrating the unsung heroes of parenting in her book published by the straits times press that explores 20 powerful stories of parenthood social stigmas and legal hurdles surmounting to love against among and against all odds <laughs> Loretta, great to have you with us this morning oh Welcome. good morning gentlemen so happy to be here and can i just say it's always such a i get such a kick when i hear an angmo say angmo kyo neil when you say oh, i just <laughs> yes. i just love the first it. person to say that <laughs> thank you very much oh, thank you so much for having me gentlemen <laughs> great to have you oh right, give us the overview i've just kind of done a little bit of a intro there but tell us about and first of all, how do you say it? Do you say mother? Mother, or, yeah. You do say mother. Okay. Yeah, like other mother. Got yeah, it. just really highlighting the other and mother. Yeah, exactly. Tell us, what what was the concept for this? Actually, really started because the book uh, really took off in uh, during COVID. And we were all in lockdown. And I was genuinely terrified that I would never see my mother again because she's very frail. And, um, you know, we had no idea when we'd see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I thought I really wanted to write something in tribute to my mother. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want it to be too you know, navel gazing. And I thought, let's look outside uh, as I'm celebrating my mother, but I also wanted to pay tribute to other non-heteronormative mothers. Um, I mean, I cisgender, you know, come from a very supportive family, but I really started thinking about what about other structures, other familial households, foster moms, step moms, LGBTQIA moms. And I really wanted to push that agenda and started asking those questions. As And as you all know, as as creators, once you start thinking about something, you know, you know, we, we have to do it. It's like Pandora's box is open. And I yeah. started asking those questions and I felt we had to get some answers for them. Well, that's right. I mean, the book is published by Straits Times Press. You explore 20 very powerful stories of parenthood, social stigmas, legal hurdles, that kind of thing. How did you come about the selection? Which yeah. stories to include and why? Great question. So obviously, top of mind were the LGBTQIA stories, also you know from my friends and, and households that have, have heard those stories. But also, I think one of the first connections that I made with is with this guy called Sai, who is the director of Julie's Biscuits, and he runs an appreciation movement called the Best of You. And he was my first link because you know I asked him I wanted to find stories of you know atypical mothers, so they could be transgender moms and dads or uh, incarcerated moms, rape survivor moms. And so Sai put me in touch with, um, the first was with Ma Madam Salima. She's an incarcerated hmm. mom because she's had, she's battled heroin addiction for over 20 years. And she's been in and out of prison for almost a third of her life. Wow. Um, we also spoke with, um, in the book, I named her Emily. She's a rape survivor mom. Um, she was date raped and she never knew her assailant and she got pregnant after um, the violent attack. Mm. Um, and she chose to keep that child. Mm. Um, and then uh, we also interviewed teenage moms that obviously had to either abort their child or keep their child because of tradition and um, religion. Um, I think the, the one that, if I can speak about it without crying, would be Joycelyn. Um, she's a terminally ill mom, and she's now an immortal mom. Mm. And now I've got to hold back my tears, gentlemen, on a yeah, Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, she passed away in the course of writing the book, and she said, I want to share my story with you because I want my daughters to know how loved they are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Loretta, and we're speaking with Loretta Chen, author of the book Mother. Mm -hmm. uh, powerful stories. Very. The the over uh, as I'm, I'm as I'm hearing you talk about it, I haven't read the book yet, but I'm hearing hope. I'm hearing forward positive motion, mm -hmm. not being a victim. I'm I'm hearing these themes kind of in your description. Is that accurate? Absolutely, Glenn. Is that obvious already? Yeah, but yeah. it really is. Yeah. I think. But but what we um, didn't want was is we didn't want to sugarcoat it. We wanted the mothers, both transgender moms, dads, you know, um, uh, FTM mothers alike, to really share their stories unadulterated, make it raw, make it real, share with us the social stigmas, the shame, the insecurity, the cracks in in societal frameworks that they had to go through. But overwhelmingly, these are all stories of overcoming why they did what they did how they did what they did and what pushes them to keep continuing mm. to want to be a parent against all odds and also for those of us who come from heteronormative families to appreciate mm. um the you know the little pleasures that we have right that you know you can take your son to work for example but um 
Johnny, I call him Johnny in the book, can't take his son to work because he was not seen as a legitimate parent. Mm -hmm. So these are things that, you know, sometimes we take for granted, right? Mm -hmm. Little things in life, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a wonderful thing that you've done. And, and in a way, I think you're being too modest in the sense that it's one thing to say these stories need to be told, but somehow you've managed to get them to tell you those stories. These are very, very difficult stories going through the list that you mentioned there. How did you do that? How did you sit down with these women and say, to gain their trust, basically, mm. to get them to open up to you, to yeah. share yeah. what is very traumatic in some cases. Yeah, and, and men as well, because, I, you know, the identification of the mother is that men are also included in the stories. But, Neil, this is such a huge compliment that you're paying to me because you're a best-selling author yourself. And so you do know how difficult it is to write these stories because it can be incredibly lonely. And I will say I've written many books, but this is one of the hardest books to write because... In many of the, in my author, in, in my uh, body of work, I usually interview leaders. And these are men and women who are accomplished. They, they're, they're very eloquent. They've been told to tell their stories many times. And, and so they have a narrative. But these are men and women who most times don't get asked these questions. Um, like I remembered uh, my migrant mom. Uh, it became honestly therapy session for her. Nobody's ever asked her story. She broke down in tears so many times. So did I. Uh, my incarcerated mom, uh, M- Madam Salima, said nobody's a- ever asked her story. So a lot of it later, I had to really piece the narrative together as well. But to your point, Neil, a lot of it was giving them the time to speak, giving them the time to heal, and in the process, us becoming really good friends. Because when you ask such intimate questions, mm-hmm. your bond to establish such mm-hmm. a close bond as well. So to your point, um, gaining their trust, uh, making them feel that it's safe, and also giving them a chance to recognize that this book, um, it's not about shaming them, but it's really about elevating and creating a platform for more people to to join in and see how we could have more empathy and compassion. Um, yeah. yeah. And just and to add, if I can, you mentioned your migrant mother there. Tell us, tell the audience your story, because that's, and her story, that's fascinating in itself. Yeah, so um, she, she's, she's happy to go by her real name, so Mabuba. She's a Bangladeshi immigrant woman who came to Singapore after surviving, I don't even know if that's a word, but um, yeah, surviving, she's such a survivor, um, rape um, when she was in Bangladesh and abuse in, in the household, and she came to Singapore as a migrant worker, and of course, um, you know, and she admits that it definitely wasn't easy. Um, many people felt like she was here to take away her job, and she actually, uh, you know, she acknowledges that Singapore has has been amazing to her, very kind, but she also says sometimes that these discriminatory things that are said, and in the book she says, you know, please don't see me as, 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 as a threat, I'm not here to take your job, I just want to survive, I'm just a mom, I just want to raise my kids, and she has an autistic daughter, and she says, I, I just really am just like you, I'm mortal, I'm just trying to make ends meet, mm-hmm. please don't see me as a threat. So very heartwarming, very heartfelt stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How, did you, how did you find your subjects, right? Because to find people that would, first of all, that have had these experiences, I'm sure they're all around us in everyday life, but that would actually then open up to you. Yeah. So it started with Sai, like I said, he's the director of Julie's Biscuits and he runs the best of you. So he was my first point of contact um, because he worked with uh, Emily in the book, who's a rape, rape survivor mom, and he worked with Madame Salima. So from there, um, it's talking and speaking with these women and because they trusted me they Mm. then opened their networks to me so it really starts from having that really hot lead as you all know from from writing as well um and then you know their friends will say yeah we want to talk to you because they feel safe and then it becomes a little community and then hopefully now with all your help gentlemen becomes a a movement (laughs) that we begin to embrace more you know discourse that is different from us right and Mm. not to judge um, so, yeah, but it really started with The Best of You. Um, also started with um, uh, one of my friends that I'm going to visit uh, today. Uh, so in the book, his Maximilian, Max, um, mm-hmm. a gay dad, but very, very, a, a huge support in the LGBTQIA movement. And so he opened his networks to me as well. Uh, because, as, as you might know, I mean, we've only just repealed 377A, but technically in the books, when they were in the midst of becoming parents, they were actually running a grain of the law. They're, they're going against the law, mm. right? Because if you can't be gay in Singapore, you can't be a gay dad. So uh, some of them had to, um, you know, even though they lead very authentic lives, they had to, you know, put a pseudonym. Not not because they want it to, but um, the yeah. Singapore uh, well, publishers uh, yeah. has put pseudonyms well, so we don't want them in trouble. Uh, sure. <laughs> and, and your book is gaining huge traction and kudos to you for that. I mean, you kindly said I was an author, but I've never had a foreword by anyone related to Barack Obama's family, <laughs> how on earth do you get the sister of the American president 
Barack mm. Obama to write mm. the foreword to your book. Oh, they are dear friends, but I really have to say Maya. And this is a big shout out to her. Maya, if you're listening, I love you. Maya Satoro <laughs> is one of my best friends. She's one of um, the first women I met when I came to Hawaii. As I was talking to Glenn when mm. I moved in 2015. I wrote a book called Inspiring Women of Hawaii. And obviously her name was floated up to me. And we met and she is just so endearing, Neil and Glenn. Like, mm. she opened her, her house to me, literally. Like, I walked into a house, and it was unlocked. And I walked in, I was like, Maya? And she wasn't home. And I was like, what? You let a stranger into your house? She's like, yeah. And I put food, and she talks like that. I put food on the table. Help yourself to Thai food, and I'll come back in a while. And we just became friends. And I think also, How could you, know, you not become friends with somebody like that, right? <laughs> right? I'm like, Maya, please lock your doors from now on. But, um, so, yeah. so, no, and, and Maya herself, too, and she's very, very honest in the book um, because she's actually now going through um, uh, uh, some health crisis in her life as well. Mm -hmm. um, she has just had a double mastectomy. She writes about it in the book, so I can talk about it. Um, and she's also going to be going through a hetero, uh, uh, yeah, a double mastectomy. Um, and she's also going to be removing her womb. And so she's in this phase where she's saying, wow. I'm about to be a, 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 a non-woman, and yet she's all, never felt more maternal in mm, her life. Mm. She wrote about that in the foreword, and she was very supportive of, of this mission and this cause that we're trying to do to give a voice to the marginalized and the, and yeah. the under, underserved. Wow. And you spend most of the time in Hawaii, or how much are you traveling? How much are you here in Singapore? I, I, yeah, just, I don't think you said it. You're Singapore-born, aren't you? We yeah, should... I am Singaporean. I still am. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think, uh, you know, you can take the girl out of Singapore, but you can't take Singapore out of the girl, right? So I can talk like that on air if I can break out a little bit and talk like that. Uh, but... Um, yeah. Um, Hawaii, as, as you well know, Glenn, has my heart because it's just mm. so beautiful. But um, I do spend quite a bit of time now in Singapore only because um, mom is, is frail. And mm. I also started a metaverse architecture firm called Small Blur that's doing really well. The Singapore government is very supportive. So I've been back a lot because there's a lot of um, interest in uh, the digital space. We can talk about that on another show. Um, so I'll be back a, a lot more than, nice. than um, I, I thought. Because I moved in 2015 thinking that, oh, I'll be, you know, uh, taking it easy in Hawaii. But, you know, as life would have it, you know, I guess I'm supposed to be, uh, you know, up and about. So, and being so an entrepreneur. I mean, it sounds fascinating yeah. in itself. What is your story then? So yeah. how, did you, how did a girl from Singapore end up in Hawaii? All right. How much time have you got? So I'll try and keep it short. So <laughs> born and raised in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, in 2000, 2000, 1999, I was given a scholarship to read my master's in London and then given a scholarship to read my PhD in UCLA and did that. But during that time, my dad had um, cancer. And so as the prodigal daughter, I came back, um, spent time in Singapore, ran a creative agency business with my brother, Eric, and I have another celebrity brother, Edmund, that people know. And so... We did a lot of, you know, work in Singapore, but I always loved to teach. So I always taught on the side and I also started writing around 2012. Uh, but anyway, um, hmm. one of my clients um, when I was running the creative agency was the government of Bhutan. Um, and when I was in Bhutan, I, I don't understand this, Glenn and, and Neil. I think it, it's just meant to be. I went there and I fell in love with Bhutan. I, I felt the synergy and I felt like I really want to get back to nature. Yeah. Like, we were, we were just there in December for holiday. Yeah, we, my we should exchange yeah. travel notes at this point. It's like we like the same things. Clearly, that's fascinating. Bhutan and Hawaii it, it and Singapore. Yeah. No, this is unbelievable. But we Bhutan does that to you, though. I mean, actually, Hawaii does, too. Right. You know. Yeah. Right. And so I have to say there's yeah. a part of me that's like, I wanted to move to Bhutan, but I'm, I'm still, you know, from a developed country, and I thought I still wanted a uh, proper health care, yeah. <laughs> if I could yeah. be yeah. The, my privileged self coming out. Yeah. And so um, I really started shopping for a country. And um, in 2012, <laughs> I traveled to Hawaii, fell in love with it, and moved in 2015. Mm, such a life of privilege, isn't it, to be able to to be able to country shop like that. You're absolutely right, Glenn. You know? and I think that's why we're, we do what we do because we yeah. want to create a, a, a platform for yeah. those that don't have the privileges. Yeah. That... Which you're doing with this book, Mother, yeah. 20 Powerful Stories of Parental Love Against All the Odds. Now, what I find very impressive and very humbling is when I read about the proceeds of this book. Mm. Tell us a little bit about that because they're not going to you, are they? No, they're not going to me. Um, it's going to be now be split between the best of you, which is the, the appreciation movement, and Joycelyn's family. Hmm. Um, so Just what remind the, us again who Joyce is. Yeah, so Joycelyn, as I shared earlier, she's the beauty queen, uh, ex-beauty queen, uh, I think Miss Singapore. And she, 
you know, never wanted to be a mother, never want to get married, but, you know, thought, you know, she met somebody and she met a somebody, somebody, and she thought, okay, I'm going to do that. Um, and after, soon after she got married, she suffered, oh, she had, had a, uh, two kids, um, suffered from postnatal depression. Mm-hmm. And so she also wants to use this platform to, to yeah. talk about postnatal depression Very and, serious tell, problem. and tell women to, to not hide in shame, talk about it, because she hid in shame, because she was like Miss Singapore, and, you know, yeah. she was a of course. pretty girl, Living the like, life. who am I to talk yeah. about postnatal depression? Yeah. Shut up. You have yeah. nothing to complain about. Get on with it. Two beautiful kids. Yeah. And so she really wants now um, for me to use this platform to say, talk about it, ladies. Seek help. It's real. And immediately after that, um, just as she was not healing from a postnatal depression, um, she gets a cancer diagnosis. Mm. And so now she's like, I really want to li- live for my kids. Um, and she can't because she's been given this diagnosis. Anyway, long story short, she shared with me the story um, over COVID. Yeah. And she knew that her, um, her time was up. And so um, she wanted this oh. book as a gift to all. And I mm. felt that the only way to honor her family was to... Um, donate beautiful. the proceeds to her family and her two beautiful daughters. Wonderful story. Loretta Chen, we have to leave it there. Uh, Loretta Chen, the daughter of Singapore and the author of Mother. I love that. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you come back and we'll talk about other things next time you come Absolutely. Back. And the How's book that? is available to all major bookstores in Singapore, Kindle and Amazon. Get your book now, Mother. Thanks, Loretta. Thank you.